WebGPU is now available. It allows high-performance 3D graphics and data parallel computation on the web. DevTools can now override network response headers. First-party sets, part of the privacy sandbox that allows organizations to declare related sites, is starting to roll out. And there's plenty more. I'm Adriana Hara. Let's dive in and see what's new for developers in Chrome 113. WebGPU is a new API for the web, which exposes modern hardware capabilities and allows rendering and computation operations on a GPU. Similar to Direct3D12, Metal, and Vulkan. Unlike the WebGL family of APIs, WebGPU offers access to more advanced GPU features and provides first-class support for general computations on the GPU. The API is designed with the web platform in mind, featuring an idiomatic JavaScript API, integration with promises, support for importing videos, and a smooth developer experience with great error messages. Many widely used WebGL libraries are already working on implementing WebGPU support or have already done so. This means that using WebGPU may only require making a single line change. For example, Babylon JS has full WebGPU support already. Play Canvas announced initial WebGPU support. TensorFlow.js supports WebGPU optimized versions of most operators. And for 3.js, WebGPU support is underway. Check out the link in the description to get the documentation, examples, and submit feedback for this powerful API. In DevTools, you can now override response headers in the network panel. Previously, you needed access to the web server to experiment with HTTP response headers. With response header overrides, you can locally prototype fixes for various headers, including but not limited to cross-origin resource sharing headers, permission policy headers, and cross-origin isolation headers. To override a header, navigate to Network, Headers, Response Headers. Hover over a header's value, click Edit, and edit it. You can also add a new header and edit all overrides in a single place. Check out the link in the description for instructions on how to use this feature and other updates in DevTools. First Party Sets is starting to roll out to stable. First Party Sets is part of the privacy sandbox. It is a way for organizations to declare relationships among sites so that browsers allow limited third-party cookie access for specific purposes. As part of this, Chrome is implementing and extending the Storage Access API, allowing a site to request access to their cookies in a third-party context. With it, organizations that have related sites with different domain names or domains for different countries, for example, can still provide services like single sign-on or share sessions across sites. Remember, this API will be rolled out slowly to users over a number of weeks to enable testing and evaluation. Check out the link in the description to access all the corresponding documentation and examples. And of course, there is plenty more. The unprefixed image-set type is now available. So authors don't need to use the dash webkit dash image dash set, and it is up to date to the current spec. The overflow inline and overflow block media features are now supported. And there is an origin trial for WebGPU web codex integration. All the details, including links, docs, and specs, are in the post linked in the description. Hit the subscribe button now so that you don't miss the latest Chrome DevTools video, GUI challenges, and more, like all the upcoming content for Google I.O. Yo soy Adriana Jara. As soon as Chrome 114 is released, I'll be right here to tell you what's new in Chrome.